Hi, welcome to the solutions to the histograms problem. So we've got uh, a juicy little problem here about an incomplete frequency table, oh no, and a histogram, and it's giving information about the heights in centimetres of some tomato plants. How tedious. Mm, maybe if they were, um, I don't know, what do you reckon, killer tomatoes? That's more interesting, isn't it? With teeth, there we are, tomato with teeth and eyes. Okay, that's more interesting. Now, histograms. It's not a bar chart. You're looking at this, and all of that primary school conditioning is making you think bar chart, bar chart, but no, it's not a bar chart. The thing you've got to remember is that frequency is area. The height here, well, that goes along the bottom, and so you can see that's telling you the width of the bars. So this is to do with width here, and we want height. So let's just write the widths down. That one's 10 wide, that one is 15 wide, that one is 5 wide, we've got 20 wide, and 10 wide. So there's our widths. And if we go down, you'll notice that there's no numbers up and down here, and that's because they expect us to work them out. So that's our first challenge, is to put a scale on it, and there'll be marks for that. So, we can't do anything with the black ones. If the area is 30 and the width is 15, the height must be 2. Why? Because 2 times 15 equals 30. Okay, down here. Width is 20, area is 50, so its height is 2.5, because 2.5 times 20 makes 50. So it's the area of a rectangle. Width is 10, area is 20, height must be 2, because 2 times 10, you guessed it, yep, it's 20. So those are the ones we can do there. Now if we go down, you'll notice that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 bars, but only 3 here. But we've got the 5th, and we know the 5th one is height of 2. So that means we can put the first number, yes, ta-da, it's the number 2. And from that, it's fairly trivial to figure out that that's the number 1, that's the number 3, and obviously we've got 2.5, 3.5, 1.5, and 0.5 there. And the next bit straightforward. So, the 0 to 10 bar has got a height of 0.5, so it's 10 wide and it's 0.5 high which means it's got an area of 5 so that goes in there and this one here has got a width of 5 that's the third one along that is the 25 to 30 and it's got a height of 3 so height of 3 width of 5, that must mean the area is 15. And incidentally, this area is 5, each box is 2.5. Must be, mustn't it? 2.5, 2.5 is 5, another 2 is 5, another 2 is 5, so that's 15. So you can do it that way as well. Now we've got to put the missing bars in. The second bar, 10 to 25, has got a height of 2. 10 to 25 has got a height of 2. There we are. You, of course use a ruler but hey I'm not doing the exam you are and I don't have a ruler on this program the 30 to 50 bar has got a height of 2.5 so 2.5 there we go and that's that and there we go we've completed the histogram Let's just have a quick look down there. Four marks for that. Okay. Cumulative frequency. Complete the cumulative frequency column. Well, that's straightforward. We just add up along the, down the side. It's all about the amount of 100 customers in a supermarket. I wonder what a supermarket is. What do you reckon? Asda? Sainsbury's? I don't know. Little? Anyway, we've got 18. We add on 22. That gets us to 40. And then we add on 35 to get us to 75. I'm just adding the next number on. That gets us to 90, 98, 
and then 100. And that's good because there was 100 customers and we put 100 at the bottom. One mark. Now we're going to draw a cumulative frequency graph for your table. Oh, where did that go? Come back. <laughs> there we are. This is going to be interesting. You have to remember the numbers. So 0 to 20 was 18. So there is 20 and 18 has got to be around about here, hasn't it? You can see the appalling scale. Notice I'm plotting it on the 20. I'm not plotting on the midpoint. In fact, it's a good idea if you're doing cumulative frequency to scratch them out. Now, I'm going to plot 40 along, 40 up. 40 along, there he is, 40 up. And then we've got 60 along, 75 up. 60 along, 60, 75, about there. You, of course, will be being precise. 80 against 90. 80 against 90, I reckon there. And then it's 100 versus 98. So 100 versus 98. And then finally, 120 goes against 100. And if you go into the trouble of doing this, don't forget to draw the curve. And the keyword here is curve, not dot to dot with your ruler. And it should do this. And it goes to zero. Whoops, maybe I just missed that one. There we are. That's a cumulative frequency curve. And I've just got two points for not very much. And now we're going to find an estimate for the median amount. Well, very straightforward. There was 100 people. So person, middle person is person 50. Person 50 B here. And we go across. Using a ruler, of course. And then we zoom down there. It was an amazingly straight line. And we try and read that off and be very careful with your scales. This number here is clearly 50, which I think means that's around about 45. So, 45. And that's our median. They will give you a little bit of wiggle room here, but try and be as accurate as you can. Question 3 box plot and table. This is just giving marks away. The lowest mark is 5. You'll notice there's 5 there, and they've got a little line on it. The lower quartile, well, that's this line here, so that's 10. The median, 30. We haven't drawn that on, there's the median. Upper quartile, 35, they've done that. Highest mark, 55, so that's going to be there, isn't it? So we will draw a line on 55. And then we finish off our little box, that's the whisker bit, that is. And that's a mark. And another mark. And the challenge question. Well, do you know what? I'm going to be a bit annoying. If you've had a go at this, you've probably quite enjoyed yourself, and you probably know if you've got them all. But I'm not going to go through these now because um, it would take me a while. Um, I will, however, email this another day.